guys, let's continue developing our analytics system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to develop the thing that allows us to track the page view, right? So how many people have, have seen this page, regardless of whether they're the same people or not, we don't care about that. We just want to track how many times this, this post or this page has been read, right? All right, so basically, uh, I want to take your attention to this command in Redis, INCR. So basically, it just increments the key. So it takes a key. If the key doesn't exist, it, it creates the key and then gives it a, a value of zero. So once you call this, this key, uh, command on that same key, it's going to increment that number by one. Perfect. So, I mean, all we have to do is basically call this command on the right key, um, you know, when the page loads, correct? Yeah, essentially, if you want to track page views, it's really, literally that simple. So let me uh, demonstrate this in, in the command line, right? All right, before I, before I do that, um, you know, I, when I do this sort of, uh, you know, teaching and, and, I, and I teach in my class and whatever, a lot of students will come to me and say, well, hey, how did you come up with, you know, you know the conclusion that this is the right thing to use? So I said, well, actually, I don't know. I mean, I just wing it. I just do whatever I think makes sense, right? Uh, once you do this stuff long enough and you've had enough practice, you start to develop an intuition and uh, you know you don't always get it right, but you know you you know where to start, right? So in this case, I think this is a good place for us to start. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with this. So, okay, so let me demonstrate in the, uh, the terminal. Uh, so I have RB loaded here uh, with, uh, you know, Redis and all loaded, so I can do Redis. All right, so Let's try, uh, you know, using this command. So Redis dot incr uh, views page views. That's it. So now, if I go to the Redis commander in the con uh, in the Chrome, um, I'm going to do a refresh over here. I'm going to get this key uh, called page views, and the value is going to be one. Now watch what happens if I run that again. INCR page views, bam, right, two. So now if I do a reload, page views is now two. So basically, every time the page loads, I just call this command, and it's going to record, you know, for that particular post or page, uh, how many how many you know times it's been loaded or viewed, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, so the only thing is this page views is just one key. So now we've got to think about how are we going to design our key, if you will. So for example, if I have a post with an ID one and I just want to track the page views, I might do something like post one, right? So if I do that, let's see what happens, right? I'm going to do a reload. Uh, I'm going to go to post and one, right? So it, now it's three because I've done this a few times before as I was, uh, you know, preparing for the, for the video. Um, but as you can see here, uh, it puts it in a folder, which is very interesting. So what this does is you're namespacing your key. So basically when you use this colon here, it puts it in, in a folder. So here we can say post one. So it's very cool if I do post two, uh, I'm gonna do a refresh over here. I'm gonna get the second post. So I can see post one has been viewed three times, post two has been viewed one time. And I can keep doing this all day long, right? So how you design your key is very important in Redis. So now I, I can track different posts and I can track the views for the different posts, right? That's, so that's really cool. Um, so another thing we can do is, uh, well, another thing we have to do is we have to track page views by the day, right? So for example, let's say I'm going to track, you know, I want, I want to know today, just for today, how much, you know, how many times post one was viewed, right? So that means I still, I have to add more stuff to my key. So for example, uh, the date so you know 2014 uh, I believe today is the 28th of April so I'm gonna do month and uh, and I'm gonna do 28th right colon so now if I hit enter what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna do a refresh over here so if I look over here in 2014 on the 4th on April the 28th in post 2 I have one view Right? So if I use the same key again, I keep doing increments like that. Uh, so now if I do a reload, it's, it's six. So basically, our, the, the, the key is very important. Like the way we design our key is super important, right? So um, 
I mean, now we have an idea of, you know, okay, so now we can track, you know, the posts and we can drill it down to like the specific day that, uh, you know, this page has been viewed, right? So that's pretty cool. So, all right, so, so now we have an idea of, you know, how this is all gonna work and we can track it by day. Let's take a look at how it's gonna work in terms of uh, unique visits, right? So uh, right now we're just tracking the Redis, uh, you know, using the, the, the views. But if we're gonna track the uh, views and the uniques, uh, you know, and we wanna like kinda like put it all under one folder, so the uh, post to uh, the views will be tracked. So we, we might need to do something like this. So views and then just do increment. And now we can do a reload. So in 2014, April uh, 28 post, the second post, we have views, which is one, correct? Awesome. So what we can do now is we can have uh, another thing. So here we're just tracking the page view. So if I run that again, you're just going to keep going up and incrementing the views, which is fine. So, so basically now we need to do the same thing for unique visits, right? So let's think about this for a second. How are we going to track the unique visits from our visitors? So every user or every person that comes to our website is going to have something which is unique, right? We're going to get that information from them. So we get the IP address, right? So basically, uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, track their IP and store their IP somewhere in Redis, and then we can count the amount of IPs that we have visiting that post in a day, right? Simple. So let's let's take a look at Redis uh, documentation for a second. So sets allows to do that very very easily. So Basically, when you add uh, a value to a set, uh, if a, a number is already, if, if a something is already a member of a set, it's gonna be ignored. Like it's not gonna, you know, it's, it's, it's not gonna get added again, which is perfect for us, right? So if, for example, the same person comes to the page uh, again and again, it's not gonna get added to the set. His IP is not gonna get added to the set because his IP already exists in that set, right? For that day. so. Um, so let's try that out, right? So we're gonna go into, uh, we're gonna use our scheme, uh, the, the, the scheme that we developed for, uh, our, uh, for our key. So I'm gonna do s add 2014 uh, for uh, 28 post two, and then we're gonna do uniques, right? So that's gonna be our key. So I'm gonna add his IP. So I'm just gonna you know, make up some IP address, so 128. Point Two three five point four three two. I don't even know if that's valid. Like four three two. Okay, let's just make something that makes more. Two o five dot zero zero zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that IP into our set, and let's take a look at what happened in Redis Commander. Let me see if I can enlarge that a tad. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm gonna go into 2014, the fourth, the 28th post number two uniques so check that out so now if i do that again i'm going to add that same ip address into the set and look at that it returned false which means it didn't add anything new to the set so if i do a reload go back in there and uh, check that out and you know it's it's still one right it's still showing me that we have just one unique visitor right awesome so if I add, if I change the IP address to 001, so this is now a different person. So I'm going to do a reload in 2014, April 28th. Um, Uniques is now two. Awesome, right? So that's exactly what we're trying to achieve, right? So all we have to do now is figure out how to dynamically generate this key and record all this data in Rails. Right? So now that we understand how, you know, which data types we need to use and which commands we need to use in Redis to achieve what we want to achieve, uh, we can now apply this in, in Rails, right? So why am I showing you guys this in step by step? So basically, um, you know, a lot of times I get asked and I get told, well, you know, I, I don't like videos where stuff just happens, you know, like I don't know how you came to this conclusion. So I'm showing you the thought process that I go through 
when I'm trying to create this sort of thing. Like I wouldn't just jump into Rails and then do it right there because the Rails has way too many things going on. Like it has, you know, all these, you know, model view controller and I, you know, I, I don't know how it all fits in just yet. I, like, I don't know how all the pieces fit together. So the best thing I can suggest to you guys who are trying to learn how to create your own system, which is, you know, not always like a part of Rails, right? You're trying to create something which is, you know, this is not uh, readily available in Rails, right? So um, my thought process is just simplify it down to the basics, right? Break it down to the most simple things. So here we're learning Redis. We're just focusing on learning this one thing called Redis, right? Using the IRB. And that's basically what it allows us to do, is allows us to isolate our understanding of certain concepts. So now we have this, and now we got this to work. Now, in the next video, let's take a look at how we can integrate all this stuff into a Rails environment.